Welcome back to another cheapo meter review and today something a little different, something a little clampy. Clampy, he says. What is he talking about? Well, by Jove, he's talking about a clamp meter, I say. That's right. It's the E1 BC3267A clamp meter. Now, what makes this special is the fact that it's rather cheap. Yeah, I picked this up for about 11, 12 bucks. And I gotta tell you, that's a really good price when it comes to clamp meters. But it's cheap on price, but not cheap on features. This guy is loaded. That's right. We're talking, it does AC current up to 400 amps. It has a five megahertz frequency resolution. It does capacitance as well, although it only has a crappy 100 microfarad cap range, but it does do capacitance. It does resistance up to 40 mega ohm. And there is an optional high voltage probe that's capable of going up to 6,000 volts. It has the auto shut off after 30 minutes. So yeah, as you can see, it does a lot. And it does a lot in a pretty small, I'd say, kinda svelte looking package. So in the box, well, first of all, there's no box. This meter did not ship with a box. It came uh, in a bag, actually. So you get this bag. Now there is a boxed version of this as well. So, and in that version you get a um, carry case. Actually, pretty decent looking case. However, um, Fortunately, in my case, that did not happen. I just got the one with the um, typical uh, bag, manual, thermocouple, and a set of probes. Starting off with the manual, it is really nothing more than a piece of paper with the specs written on it. And that being said, really, you don't need a whole heck of a lot. Pretty basic meter, basic feature set per se, and we're gonna go over that right now. So the meter itself, it is a 4,000 count um, multimeter, and it has a uh, integrated AD converter. The refresh rate, so they say, is approximately three times per second, and it comes with uh, two AAA batteries. Clamp opening is 33 millimeters. The internal radius of the clamp is 34 millimeters, so it should be fairly um, useful for most of your uh, clamping needs. Now some clamps do open up bigger than this, but I mean, generally speaking, this pretty well has the majority of people covered. So the default probes it ships with are uh, marked as 1000 volts. They are obviously not silicon, um, but that being said, they're okay in terms of the overall feel. Now the shrouding is very, very minute on these. So I would have liked to have seen longer shrouding um, but anyway, the tips themselves, fairly pointy and I mean, they don't feel cheap. It feels actually like a half decent probe, uh, perhaps a little on the small side, but once again, this is a small clamp meter. So to turn this meter on, you simply hold down on the power button and instantly you have your LCD display at the bottom. Now to turn it off, it's a little different. There is no off switch per se. Simply hold down on the power button again. And after five seconds or so, you will hear that long beep. And that means the meter will shut off. Speaking of the selector switch itself, it actually has a very, very, very nice feel to it. Considering this is a rather inexpensive clamp meter, dare I see cheap, it feels really good. It won't get stuck between ranges. Very, very nice tactile feel. The grooves themselves give you a lot of friction, so you have no trouble with that switch. So I imagine if you had gloves on, what have you, it would be just fine to work with. Nice clackety clack in between ranges. And the other thing I like, and it's a really small feature, but it's just a really good feature. Another feature of this selector switch I really like is the fact that the arrow or the pointer dial itself is very nice. It's not just painted on in a half, you know, baked way. This is actually raised, you know, probably about a millimeter or so from the actual dial. So you can actually, you know, feel it. And it just gives a really good indicator of where you are. So, you know, something so minor, but it really makes a difference, especially when uh, there is low level light conditions. It just makes things a lot easier to see.
Speaking of low level light, there is no backlight on this clamp meter. Firstly, we're going to test the continuity feature, one of my favorites. To get to continuity, we have put the dial into the selector switch section of resistance, diode, and continuity. Now, hit the power button, and you see how it cycles through the different ranges. So there is no separate select switch. You do have to hit the power button to get all of the different features. All right, so we're in continuity. Let's check it out. Firstly, of course, we're going to use the default probes it ships with. Let's see if they're any good. Oh my god, it's terrible. Yeah, can't even hear the damn thing. It's unlatched, but it is so, so slow and meek and weak and... Ah! Complete shite. You got it. Got the probe masters out. Here we go. Continuity test number two. Night and day, folks. Invest a good set of probe masters. You will be much happier. Now, there is no rel feature on this clamp meter, so let's start off by checking the resistance of the leads themselves. Also, not too shabby. All right, first off, we are going to look at a 0.5 ohm resistor. That was 0.6, not too bad. Off by 0.1 ohm. And here we have a 22 mega ohm resistor, and let's see. It's just under one mega ohm difference. I think that's a pass. Next up, it's diode mode. So let's see how good or not so good the VC3267A is. Starting off with the blue diode. And nothing. White, nothing, green. Nada, nada, and finally the red, and absolutely nothing. Awesome. So if you do any sort of diode testing, leave the clamp meter at home. Checking the voltage output on diode mode, as we can see, it's 1.4 volts. So very meager, very measly, definitely not going to be enough to light up uh, those LEDs. Finally, in capacitance mode, I've got a 3.3 microfarad capacitor, 10% tolerance. Let's try it out. Showing up as 2.8 microfarad, close enough. Also, we have a 0 0.01 microfarad cap. And just under 10 nanofarad, so that's pretty close. Finally, checking a standard diode. And here we see the forward voltage drop. No problems there. The VC3267A also does temperature. It is in Celsius mode only. But that being said, you do not need a thermocouple attached to check the ambient temperature. If you want to check liquid, heat, what have you, obviously then you will use the included thermocouple, but not needed if you just want to check the general ambient temperature. In AC mode, no problem, 121 volts showing on the 120 volt rail. Currently have the meter attached to the uh, power mains in the house. As you can see, it's showing as 60 hertz. If we hit the switch again, we have our duty cycle, which is the normal 50%. Taking a look at the DC accuracy, we are on the 250 millivolt range. As you can see, pretty darn close, 249.9 millivolts. Now let's just switch that around to the voltage. We should be showing 2.5 volts. Pretty close, 2.498 volts. So in terms of the DC accuracy, not too bad. So next up is AC current. Now most people when they're using a clamp meter for the first time don't realize that you can't simply take your clamp meter, put it onto your current mode and go ahead and get a reading. It's just not gonna work. So the reason why that mystifies so many people is actually relatively simple. It's because the current 
running through both wires are actually um, canceling out the induction into the coil. And with that cancellation, you're basically nullifying or negating any reading that the meter is getting. So what you have to do to get around that is you have to measure only a single So in order wire. to negate this sort of canceling out effect, what you have to do is measure the current through one wire. So in this case, I've got a cheapo glue gun from the dollar store. That's right. Yeah, the dollar store. This is like two bucks. And um, on the gun itself, it's saying that the gun is utilizing between 10 and 15 watts of power. So using Ohm's law, we can actually verify if this is actually true or not. So what we'll do is we've got the clamp meter here. I have it plugged into the wall right now. And we're gonna use the, the red, the hot wire, and we are going to take our clamp and just put it around the one wire. And as you can see, no worries, there you go. This little goo gun, goo gun, <laughs> glue gun, is consuming 0 0.05 amps. So how do we convert that to watts? Good question. So in this case, we're simply going to utilize Ohm's law to verify the amount of watts being utilized by this mini small glue gun. If we look at the chart, we're going to take voltage and we're going to times that by the amps and that should tell us what our watts are. So in this case, I'm going to utilize 0 0.05 because it is fluctuating back and forth. If we do the math, we simply do 0 0.05 times 120, that gives us a value of six. So six watts are actually being utilized or generated by this mini glue gun. So it's actually better than what they're indicating on the device itself. Here they're saying it'll utilize between 10 and 15 watts. So it's literally half that. So yeah, in terms of overall power consumption, this is a pretty low power glue gun. So that's just one way that you can utilize um, Ohm's law in this case and your clamp meter to give you some sort of an indicator in terms of energy flow. I'm going to take this puppy apart. Let's see, we have uh, one, two Phillips screws. So let's do that. Okay, so here we are, the moment of truth. And it's going to just lift off, come sa. And here we are on the inside of the E1 clamp meter. So first off, right from the get-go, we can see um, no shielding. And if we take a look here, these are the battery terminals. Um, they are hooked right onto the BCB with two big globs of solder. Seems to be pretty decent, uh, no worries there. The piezo itself, the speaker is on there. Actually, in terms of piezo soldering, that's pretty decent. Let's see if I can get a little bit of a close-up here. So no issues there. If you look at the input jacks themselves, they are very well retained and they are of the split variety and they are soldered directly onto the PCB itself. In terms of the input protection, I do see some resistor clamping going on here with a bunch of melts. Here we have one lonely PTC and a diode down there. Um, so that's pretty well it. I'm not seeing uh, any mobs per se. Um, nothing else along those lines. You okay, know, we're going to go a little bit further than that. I want to see what's on the other side. So we're going to take off that clamp. That was just being held in by uh, one Phillips over here. There's the clamp spring mechanism right here. And a look at the clamp itself so there we have the wires that are going to be uh, measuring that uh, current flow being generated and as you can tell we have the two steel inserts this is really heavy um, it doesn't come across obviously over the video but uh, it's very heavy um, so not too not too shabby really now I'm gonna plop this up Plop, is that even a word? Okay, and 
we look at the PCB, let's just take a look here itself. So here's the uh, Elastomar or the zebra strip. We have one on this side. The other one here is just holding it in, so to speak. And the uh, white filament for the LCD panel itself. Here are the um, uh, tracks that, not the tracks, but the um, selector um, mechanism that the roadie switch makes contact with on the PCB. Just your standard variety. One rubber button over here. And nice thing about these input jacks, if you look, they're actually in there. I thought they were gonna come off, but no, indeed they are in there really, really solid. So um, kudos to E1 for a really good jack implementation on this uh, inexpensive clamp meter. On the other side of the PCB, all we have are just the rotary selector tracks themselves. Um, fairly decent spacing. Looks to be, I don't know if that's gold plated or not. I don't think so, but it is um, nice and clean. Very, uh, very well done PCB. This is the uh, display header that uh, makes contact with the Elastomar to feed the uh, liquid crystal display. And as you can see here, this is the um, soldering for the input jacks. Probably could have been a little bit better in this department. Um, might help if you can see what the heck I'm talking about. So here are the input jacks on the opposite side, and yeah, I would have preferred to see a little bit more um, solder being used in this respect. Okay, back to the A side. Take a little bit closer look, you can see right here we have our 4-bit microcontroller. This is designed by Sinowell. So this does all sorts of operations, uh, including CMOS, um, and that is directly talking to the IC. The IC itself is cobbed. If we do move up a little bit here, we can see um, we have one resistor, and this is actually soldered directly to the clamp mechanism itself. I'm telling you, they used a lot of solder, so that's on there really, really well. Finally, on this daughter board here, uh, as you can see, we have um, one diode, and this is a ultra low power op amp, operational amplifier. A couple of trim pots over here, and that looks to be everything. And finally, right here at the bottom, we have one uh, bipolar transistor. So that's probably used for some sort of um, DC switching function. Could also be amplifying the uh, digital uh, signal as well. Um, yeah, so that's pretty well it. Would have liked to have seen uh, a little bit more um, PTCs perhaps, a couple of mods, but that being said, don't forget I paid a whopping nine bucks. Okay, I'm gonna come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the E1 VC3267A clamp meter. I really, really like it. It's well built, it's solid, feels good in the hand. You know what, I even like the color choice. It's a good looking clamp meter. Yeah, it does not do DC current, but that being said, it does everything else in a really good way. It does temperature too, which you don't see all the time on a clamp meter. You know what, for the price, bang per buck ratio, it's a solid buy. I'm gonna give the E1 a solid 3.5. Put a purchase link below, and as always, keep those comments coming. Give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And best of all, keep on testing.